Welcome back nerds. In this video, I'm gonna show you five free malware tools that every IT professional needs in their toolkit. And stay tuned till the end because the last one may become your new secret weapon. Every IT needs the right set of tools in order to perform malware removal jobs. This might include scanners, but in this video, I'm also gonna show you powerful free tools that allow you to verify and validate if the system is in fact infected, and then also how to certify that the system is now clean. So this video is gonna be targeted at IT professionals and people looking to get into IT. But if you're not one of these people and you're a bit advanced, feel free to watch along. This can often be useful to even the intermediate user. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first tool we're gonna to need is ESET Online Scanner. You can get it right here at the link in description. Matter of fact, I'm gonna link everything in the description to what we're talking about today, just to make it easy. But it's right here on the website, and you're just gonna scroll down here and get the online scanner. If you click this one time scan, that will download the application, and then we can move on to the next tool. Before we continue, I got a quick word in order to keep the lights on. A lot of you guys have been installing Windows on many machines. You may have several computers and you might be paying full retail price for Windows 10 Professional or Windows 11 Professional and you just don't have to do that. Forget all that and just come to VIPCDKDeals.com, which you can follow the link in description, and you'll see the titles here such as Win 10 Pro, Win 11 Pro, even Office is significantly cheaper. But also, I have a coupon code for you. If you use code NK25, that will bring the price down from $23.65 for Windows 10 Pro to $16.55. And this coupon code works on any title on the website. The next thing we're gonna need is Rogue Killer, which you can get either directly through Atlas Software, who's the manufacturer of the software, or you can get it through bleepingcomputer.com or Major Geeks. I went ahead and got it from right here. You'll just click here and then go over to download and you can download the application. The next application we are going to need is Hitman Pro. And if you're an old school IT, I'm sure you're familiar with this one. You'll go right here to hitmanpro.com. Again, everything's linked in the description. And then you'll go ahead and go to downloads. And then you'll go ahead and click the 64-bit. 32-bit if you also want to run this on older Windows 7 or XP systems that might not be 64-bit. But for most of you, just download the 64-bit and it'll be fine. And the final virus scanner that we're gonna download is Malwarebytes. Again, ITs, this isn't new. We're gonna go ahead and download this one right here. If you go to the link in the description, take you right here, you'll download Malwarebytes. This one, as well as Rogue Killer, do need to be installed, and we'll get to that. The final thing that you're gonna need is something that every IT that works on Windows-based machines should have, which is Windows Cisternals, particularly two parts of it that we're gonna use today, which is Auto Runs and Process Explorer. And first, you're gonna go ahead and get Auto Runs, and you're gonna download this right here. It'll be a zip file, simply extract it, and then you'll have a folder in your toolkit folder. Then on Process Explorer, Go ahead and download this here. This is a portable executable, so it doesn't have to be installed. Just keep it in a folder in your toolkit. So by now, you should have everything downloaded. I already put mine into a folder that I named IT Tools to keep things nice and organized. You should perhaps do the same. Now, next thing I'm gonna show you is the order of operations, as it were, because you don't wanna just run any scanner or just do a task in whatever order. You might cause problems that way. So I'm gonna show you the method that I use, and we're gonna start with validation. Now, if I've already gone over some people's heads and it's too techy, and you might not be at this level of IT, I'm gonna direct you to another channel, my buddy Scott, Scott Merle runs the channel Ask Your Computer Guy. He's a dear friend of mine and an IT that I highly respect. He recently made a video that is right here tailored towards the everyday user, and that might be more your cup of tea. All right, since you're still here, that means you're clearly an advanced user. Congratulations. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to validate that a machine is in fact infected. One of the ways that I do that is by using Process Explorer and with a few tweaks. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the folder here. And the one of these that we're gonna use is the 64.exe, not the 64A, not the regular exe. The one right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and double click on it. All right, now what Process Explorer is, is a more advanced, more detailed version of, or alternative to Task Manager. We can do all kinds of things here and see lots of information. Now what we're gonna to do to validate if we have an infection is we're gonna go up here to the top to Options, and then VirusTotal.com, and then check virustotal.com. And what this is doing right now is all of these processes that you would normally be looking at through Task Manager 
is being submitted to Virus Total for verification, and it's being scanned by 76 or 78 of the world's virus scanners, every person in the playbook. And it's all being checked here. So I can actually go down the line and see if there's an infection, including this one here. It's coming up as three out of 76. That's a false positive. This is my Wondershare editor, which I'm using right now. We can go through the whole list here and it's submitting the hash down here, everything running on the system. And this is much better than using Task Manager. In fact, a lot of people get in trouble because Task Manager doesn't show enough. So even an IT might be looking there, something looks suspicious, but they don't really know unless the, the executable is clearly a malicious name or, or they have a lot of mix of experience and they've seen that exact infection before. But you can't really quantify or or, or articulate that to a client, like a customer, if you're faking their computer, by just saying, trust me, I know. Well, here you can actually verify and validate, yes, you are infected. And you can even click here on the link to be taken to virustotal.com and it'll show you the result. Now, a further thing that, that's really cool that people that are working with malware need to know is that you can often detect process hollowing. Process hollowing is when malware injects into another valid process of Windows to hide its activity. So it might inject into SVCH host and people might think that's their virus. It's not. It's a process hollowing. One of the ways I do that is I go up here to, I actually right click on any of the columns here and click select columns and then I check command line. And there's a whole bunch of options you can activate here. I click OK. Now I, I can see exactly what command line all these processes are running. So I can actually see if this is running a command that doesn't really make any sense with that process or what we're doing with the machine, that might be something to look at. Now you can read the documentation as to what all of the color codes mean, but I am going to point out one to you. This purple color code for NordPass background app, this is my password manager made by NordVPN and it's coming up as purple. What that means is that this, this uh, process is, is running a service and you might find that a remote access Trojan that's inviting a hacker in will also be running a service. So it doesn't mean it's infected, but it's something to look at. Next step, after you validated that a system is infected, we're going to go ahead and go with ESET Online Scanner. And this thing is a portable application, does not need to be installed. First thing it's going to do is it's going to check for updates and install new updates. We're going to go ahead and get started here. We're going to accept the license agreement. And then you can, this is totally uh, optional. Let me click no thanks. And then if this is a system where you don't want pups, potentially unwanted applications, you probably might want to enable this. Go ahead and click continue and then we'll perform either a full scan or a quick scan or a custom scan. Custom scan might be important if you don't want to scan a drive that you know has nothing infected. For example, uh, partially encrypted drives or other types of storage drives which have nothing installed. In general, you would typically run a full scan, but in this case, you could just run a quick scan. This scanner is fantastic. The This here is very important. Enable or disable quarantine of potentially unwanted applications. If you have a lot of pups on there that you actually like, that's usually bad applications that don't have the best privacy, maybe are not made well or not in the best interest of the viewer, but they are, they're not particularly a virus, um, then this is a decision to be made. I'm going to enable it, and then you would do a start scan. First, it downloads the module update, then it runs a full system scan. And this one is very effective at, at, at detecting a lot of zero day, uh, a lot of uh, really hard to find uh, viruses. And ESET is actually one of my favorite antivirus companies. I actually use them. I have their small business security, which they just released. Essentially, it's ultimate, but tailored more for business. And if you want to get them, they're fantastic. I have the links to their best promos in the description. Um, I love these guys. So anyway, it's going to scan here. Once it finds detections, it's going to go next, next, next. And that's how you run an ESET online scan. Really simple scanner, really strong, not a whole lot to it. Great for having on a USB device because it's portable. You don't have to install it. Next, we're going to run Hitman Pro, and I'm going to show you something very pro to do with it. Once you open up Hitman Pro, go ahead and go over here to settings, then over here to advanced and you'll see there's a place to put in your API key. This is from VirusTotal. If you don't have an API key from VirusTotal, go get one. Go to VirusTotal.com, create a free account, and then in your profile, you'll have your own personalized API key. You'll enter it right here, and then whenever you're running this scan on Hitman Pro, you're going to have the whole power of VirusTotal linked 
to this scan. So you have an extra 78 or 76 virus scanners giving a second opinion to these results. Once you're done there, go ahead and click OK. And then next. And then you click yes here if you'd like to leave this installed on the computer you're cleaning. In this case, I'm gonna leave it as no, then click next. Then it immediately starts scanning the computer. And this is really good at scanning for root kits, trojans, all kinds of types of infections that often get overlooked by other scanners. So the last scanner we need to run before we validate that the machine is in fact clean is Rogue Killer. Now Rogue Killer is a powerful application that's very interesting in that it was designed to go after, well, rogues. What a rogue is, it's a type of malware that masquerades as a legitimate application. This was very, came, it came into a lot, lot of providence um, in the late 2000s where you would have this big pop-up that looked like a Windows Defender window and it said you had 10,000 viruses. And it was all a scam and it locked up the machine and it often took a professional to remove and they were very difficult to remove because oftentimes virus scanners didn't detect that it wasn't a real application. Rogue Killer is not easily fooled, so it's also good for going after Trojans and adware and a lot of malicious applications. Once it's finally installed, you're not going to click this one down here. You're going to actually go over here to this button and click scan. And then here you can choose either a full system scan or a quick scan. Typically you want to run a full scan. In this case, I'm just going to show it off with the quick scan here. And then this is literally going to scan for infections. It's really good at detecting kind of like malware bytes with registry issues. Like here it's detecting that I've turned off UAC. Typically most normal computers you wouldn't want that disabled. In my case it, it's perfectly fine. But once it's done scanning you would go here to results and it'll tell you what it's found. Okay I'm going to go ahead and ignore this. And then in your case you might leave that. It's up to you. And then click removal. Once it's done that's it. At this point, you can uninstall Malwarebytes and uninstall Rogue Killer unless you intend to leave them there. Typically, you would want to uninstall them. Now we need to verify that the system is now clean. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to run auto runs. In this folder, we're going to run auto runs 64.exe as administrator. Right click on it, click run as administrator. Agree to the UAC. I'll go ahead and maximize this. And just like how in, uh, in, in Process Explorer, you go to Options, and then Scan Options, and then Check Virus Total, and Submit Known Images, and then click Rescan. Mine's already set to scan everything through Virus Total, so I can actually look through everything installed on the system. <coughs> this is a top-down view of everything installed, including the associated registry entry. And over here on the right column is the virus total column. So I can check everything on the system. I can also go through Process Explorer and validate that there's no more infected processes. But once I go through here and validate I have no infections, I have one out of 77 right here. If I click on that, it's gonna take me to the virus total result. And I know this is a false positive. It's just trap mine thinks it's malicious. I already know what it is. Um, this goes to uh, one of my USB devices. It's just a driver. And I can go through here as well. Typically, 1 out of 76, 2 out of 76, even 3 out of 76 is, is not a detection. And then yellow just means that this registry key goes to uh, something that's no longer there. If I go jump to entry, there's nothing really going on here. So, And if I keep going down the list, 2 out of 76, this is Adobe. Right over here, it's verified. If it's in pink, that means it's just not verified by Microsoft. Doesn't mean it's an infection, but it's something to look at. I know what this is, it's 7-zip, and the maker of this software did not register with Microsoft and didn't want to pay the price anyway, so. Doesn't necessarily mean it's infected. Once you go through this whole list, these are all false positives. A real positive is going to have 20, 30, a, a lot more than three or two. And once you've gone through here and you've checked all the results and it's still populating here, once you've gone through here, you can validate the machine is in fact uh, clean. Now running these tools in this fashion where we're validating and also verifying at the end with powerful tools such as Process Explorer with Virus Total enabled as well as Auto Runs with Virus Total enabled, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt we're not going to be in a situation where we have to tell somebody, well I ran a scanner and I didn't find anything. But you don't really know, do you? Because you didn't actually verify. 
using these two tools in the front of the in the beginning and the end, or using them both in the beginning and the end, you're able to tell the person that's infected, or even for your own peace of mind, I checked everything running on the system, and I checked everything installed in the system, and I ran scanners. There is no way that you're infected. I know for us, without a shadow of a doubt, there is nothing there that's infected. Because you have all the tools to know that they're not infected or that they are infected before wasting 10 hours or how many hours it takes for you to clean a system. You could also save the people money if you are someone behind the counter. You don't need to charge everybody 200 bucks when they're not really infected. So. I hope you found this video helpful, and you, again, you can find everything at the links in the description. If you like this video, please smash that like button and consider subscribing. I shall see you next time.